From the studios of WWAY, it's the C.B. McGrath Show. The C.B. McGrath Show is brought to you by your Carolina Ford dealers, Papa John's, Molly Maid, and Harris Teeter. And now, here's your host, Mike Vaccaro. Well, good morning. Welcome, everybody. Mike Vaccaro here alongside the coach, C.B. McGrath. Down to the final week of the Railer season in conference play. We'll talk about what's ahead for UNCW this week. But we'll also look back at the week that was for the Seahawks on the road at Elon at William and Mary as well. We'll also have our player profile in the graduate transfer, Sean O'Connell. That's coming up today as well. Our coach uh, coming back off the road. Two tough setbacks for you guys against Elon, against William and Mary. And unfortunately, in both these games, you got yourself down. Yeah. You came back to get into both of those games, took a lead as well uh, in Elon. But uh, again, you expend a lot of energy to come back from those early deficits. Yeah, I mean, Elon, um, they just made shots early. And I think everybody on the scouting report, except for the very last person uh, who hadn't even attempted a three, it said prevent rhythm threes. The first four shots they shot were rhythm threes. And so you get behind the eight ball right away. Um, you know, and, and we came all the way back and took the lead in the second half. And then they just made some shots and we, we had some turnovers that really cost us. And, uh, you know, they got some offensive rebounds, some second chance points. Uh, so we didn't get over the hump there. And then William Mary was a different situation where it was just in transition. Um, I thought we did a good job guarding the three for the most part. Uh, we just didn't get back in transition. We weren't getting offensive rebounds, so you're not going the offensive boards, but yet we're not getting back on defense as fast as we need to. So, you know, that's a, not a recipe for success right there. And uh, we did fight back and, uh, you know, cut it to one with about coming out of the under four timeout and uh, missed three out of four free throws and uh, never, got back, never got back over the hump after that. Yeah, so two tough losses for the Seahawks. Again, you go back to Elon on Thursday. You knew going in, this is a team that uh, is based on their three-point shooting. And as you said, you, you, you preached to your kids about those rhythm threes, and unfortunately they got them early on. They had 12 threes in that first half. You got down 17, but again, you took the lead that second half. So things were going your way at some point in that contest. Yeah, well, you know, every game has ebbs and flows. And there's going to be goods and bads, and every team's going to go on runs. They went on their run early, but we gave them the confidence. You know, if, if we get into them early and they don't make some rhythm threes, they're not shooting step back threes. I mean, Santa Ana, a couple of those threes were deep step backs. I mean, you, you can't necessarily defend it, you know, and usually people don't make those kinds of shots, but he made a couple rhythm threes and felt good. And the same thing with Sebring when we played him in Trask. You know, we let them get going and gave them some confidence. And it's hard once they get confident to uh, you know, shut them down, and uh, but yeah, I, I was pleased where we were at halftime. You know, coming all the way back and, and making it a game, and then we went on a little run and, and took the lead. And like I said, you know, just a few turnovers, um, just careless. You know, trying to force it in. I thought we did a great job getting back in the game by just making the easy play. You know, we start to drive, find the open man, we get the shot. If not, we got the offensive rebound. Uh, later, we tried to create for ourselves and attack two or three guys, and we turned it over three or four straight times, and uh, they scored, and that was the difference in the ballgame. Yeah, I think some of the legs got a little weary as well down the stretch. The Seahawks missed some close-in shots in this contest, and unfortunately could not come all the way back here, even though they did take that lead in the second half. Let's take a look now at our Harris Teeter highlights from Thursday night's game inside Shar Center, the first visit for UNCW in the new facility at Elon. That's his teammate gives it up to Getz and he'll fire for the three. No good. Kaycock with the rebound right over the top of Nathan Brady in the bucket. Good. Deflected away. O'Connell on the recovery. He'll move it back to Kaycock. No shot. No good. But Sean O'Connell there on the tap follow. 17. Taves skips it away to Silla. Silla will fire off of the left corner and good. Silla's got the confidence tonight. Two face up jumpers over Chuck Hanna, I believe. UNCW early on, especially from those perimeter shots. Pick it up, gets in the inbound. Silla got it right back and then leaves it downstairs, left side for O'Connell for the dunk. And He's never got four, 23 14. Uh, drives it to the top of the key, trying to give it away to Sebring. Ball deflected away. Kaycock on the run out, could not get it to go, but Silla there off of the rebound. And I'm missing both opportunities. 441 left to play. In the ball game, 33-24, Phoenix in front by nine. At the other end, Jalen Sims for the three and good. Has got eight in the opening half, 36-29. At the other end, Jalen Sims with the answer. Scatson puts it on the deck, taking it 
down the lane, right side, kick in the corner. This is Taves for the three and good. Rebound pulled away by Silla. He'll move it away to Taves. Long pass to Kaycock. Kaycock catching down the lane. And the bucket good. Devontae Kaycock, his third field goal. He's got eight. 43 and a good pass and a good shot from Pretty ends up in three. Phoenix, 13 of 26 from deep. Taves wow. at the other end. Downstairs, a little whip pass fastball. From the field, you know shooters love to go to the line to see those shots fall, but now Elon on defensive possession, Taylor. This is Silla for the three off of the left side and the bucket good. 84-77, you see the final score there. You saw that last bucket from Gene Talcilla. Good night for him. Titus season high with 24 points, shot 6 of 12. UNCW is a team, 40%, 43% for Elon. Coach, you out-rebounded at this team, 44 to 39, but again, the three is a big factor here. Even though you did a good job, you adjusted in the second half. I thought they only had five in that second half. You finished with 10 for the game. And, and again, you see some good things with Kai Taves distributing the basketball. Jalen Sims, as you just said off air, uh, you know, starting to hit his threes and, and looking confident with a shot like that. Yeah, you know, obviously uh, we want to win and, uh, you know, there's no, there's no more victories, but you like to see the guys playing better, you know, in spurts and, and getting some confidence. Um, but it's going to take a, it's going to take a lot, you know. Charleston's a tough team. That's our next game, and then we got the CA tournament. But, you know, we need to be better defensively and taking the scouting report into the game immediately. Yeah. Not seven minutes in, not three minutes in, you know, because we're putting ourselves in those holes, and we are, we are expending a lot of energy to get back in the game, and we do get back in the game. And then we just run out of gas or make the mental mistake or give up an offensive rebound. It's just something little, you know, that sort of breaks our backbone after we get all the way back. And then it compounds into the next possession. And there's two or three possessions, you know, that don't go our way. And that's the difference in the ball game right now. Hey, you mentioned the adjustments. Uh, you know, they shoot 46% in the first half and only 39% in the second half, Elon. So, again, the defensive adjustments were there. Just not enough, unfortunately, for the Seahawks as they fall short 84-77. It was the 21st double-double of the game, or the season rather, for uh, Kaycock. He had 10 points and 18 rebounds in the setback for UNCW. We'll take a break here. When we get back, we'll uh, take a look at highlights from uh, yesterday's game in Williamsburg, Virginia. The Seahawks and the William and Mary Tribe second meeting of the year on the road for the Seahawks. We'll have those highlights next. Okay, people, it's Ford Truck Month. And you know what that means. The best deals on America's best-selling trucks for 42 years straight. And with over 28 million sold, isn't it time you join the Stampede? Now get 0 for 72 on F-150 or 11395 in total savings plus 1000 cash back only at your Carolina Ford dealer. Hey, Seahawk fans, fill your basket before every game with everything you need from Harris Teeter. Delicious subs and wraps, fresh hot store-made pizza, crowd-pleasing party platters, or ready-to-serve wing trays, just to name a few. Firing up the grill? Harris Teeter Reserve Angus Beef will be the superstar of your game day meal. We guarantee it. Stop in your Harris Teeter for great savings on game day foods, or download the HT app to order ahead. Harris Teeter, where Seahawk fans shop for groceries. gift from Molly me. Wow. Honey, look at all this free time Molly Mae gave us. We could do anything with this time. Everyone deserves some free time. Call Molly Mae today for your gift of time. 392-3234. Along the coast of North Carolina lies one of the best universities in the Southeast, the University of North Carolina Wilmington. UNC Wilmington, giving flight to imagination. Well, after the meeting with Elon, the Seahawks took the trip to Williamsburg, Virginia, second meeting of the year with the tribe and coaches. We always talk about, you know, when you play them, that 
Princeton style offense, and then you have the quick turnaround as well, going from a Thursday to a Saturday, getting ready for this team is, is always difficult, but I thought you did a good job defensively from the, the three point standpoint, because this is a team a lot like Elon that takes a lot of threes and you didn't let them do that in this game. Yeah, you know, I thought our guys did a pretty good job when we were five on five defensively. Uh, what, what Billy and Mary did a great job of was attacking us in transition. And so they were scoring, you know, two on one, three on one, two on zero, oh, based off of either our long shots or our turnovers. We said way too many turnovers in the game that led to fast breaks. And, you know, it's hard to defend in transition. We, we want to get out in transition. That's why we want to play fast so we can get some shots in the open court, uh, not just five on five. Um, but I do think our guys understood what they were going to do with the back cuts and the motion and those kind of things and the three-point shots. And, and we did a pretty good job contesting those and, and limiting their shots, uh, per se, from the three. Uh, but they, they did capitalize in the lane, for sure. As you said, a kind of a pivotal point, 306 to go in the game. Nathan Knight fouls out. You get the foul. You get a technical foul on uh, Tony Shaver on the bench for uh, William Mary. Just could not capitalize from the free throw line. Got it to uh, a one-point game at that point, but it seemed like they're, they're veteran players. Justin Pierce kind of took over from that point. Yeah, you know, obviously we come out of that timeout. We have four free throws coming. Uh, we only make one of them, so we're down one. And uh, we did get a stop on the other end, but Pierce got the offensive rebound, got another stop. Uh, that's when Ty G went to the ground and got the loose ball and gave it and gave it to Kai or whoever. We run a play, we turn it over, and then Pierce got a layup off of a switch. We don't score, we miss, and then uh, he shoots a three. So he had five points to make it from a one-point game to a six-point game, and you know by then you know that it was a minute and something to go and. We were trying to make threes and, and foul the right guys, and, and they made the free throws they had to, and they made the plays they had to down the stretch. Yeah, totally. It's off uh, setback for UNCW on the road in Colonial Williamsburg. Let's take a look now at our Rage Jewelers highlights. Fourth. Absolutely. This Page youngster is a very good pass. Well, and I right said, on I'll tell you, I, I shouldn't have been. Nine wins and 20 losses, Charlie. Another good steal with when they have a guy that's in the top of the country in rebound, a guy that's in the top country in assists. Here's Gatson for three, and all of a sudden it's a seven up game. We talked about that before. You, you know, you, you don't like to play defense necessarily. They can do something you don't like to do for a while. Somebody likes to play offense, including that guy right there, and Devontae Kaycock in a nice move around Nathan Knight. A front and a bad pass, another one. Here's Ty Taylor with a driving layup, and the drive down by is down by four. Drive that time. Got to move the basketball in offense. Well, that's what Dave did down in Wilmington, right there, went uh, past his defender and got the layup. Along that baseline, being chased by Pierce. Now five on the shot clock. And they have to throw up a runner, and that's a, a, a late one, actually, a three pointer. Jalen Sims hitting it with four, and this is Dave. Nicely by Luke Lowy, and he'll throw up a one-handed one and a half seconds remaining, and the three-pointer goes in. Nathan Knight off the floor. The earliest steal by Pierce, wide open three, is up and no good. The tip by Devontae Kaycock is coming in. Did your thing. It's a pick up top from Kaycock, left elbow, a long three-pointer, good by Jay Estime. Six, uh, six assists for Pierce, by the way. Number three pointer, good by Gatsby. Now they got Tames with an open tray. Short rebound in the corner. Gatsby throws up a three. Good. 71 63 final score there. You see UNCW 40%, 50% for uh, William & Mary in this contest. Uh, the, the key stat coach, or one of the key stats, being with, with the turnovers. Unfortunately, 20 turnovers in this game. You have to go back to mid December when you guys have that many turnovers. You've done a nice job in that category, but uh, boy, it just wasn't coming easy here in this game, the offensive execution. Yeah, you know, and obviously uh, 14 of the 20 came from Kai and Devontae, and those have been our two most consistent players for the most part all season. So they just struggled with the turnovers. Um, you know, we didn't get enough shots, but I mean, you look at the stat sheets, they out-rebounded us. We had more turnovers. They shot a higher percentage, you know, all these kinds of things, but in the end, we are at the line with three minutes to go with four free throws to have a chance to take the lead. And if we close it out the right way, you know, stats aside, we get the job done. And I think it's just because we just kept on grinding and competing. You know, the guys, 
they were tired. Uh, we, we used our last time out with 13 minutes to go in the second half. I had to use two in the first half to stop runs. And then obviously the way we started the second half, we gave up back-to-back -back transition baskets, used a timeout, and then Kai dove for a loose ball. And he, he didn't know we only had one timeout left. You know, we didn't necessarily say that to them um, at any point until, you know, we, we said we had no timeouts left. Uh, and so he used that last timeout with 13 minutes to go. And it's, it's hard to make a comeback and play in a close game with no timeouts. But they just kept gutting it out and fighting through it and, and you know, getting through the fatigue. But I think that had something to do with the errors at the end. Yeah, for Kai, he finishes with 17 points, 7 assists, but did have those 6 turnovers. 12 points for Ty Gadsden. He had 10 from Sims off the bench. Again, knocked down 3-3. Three threes. So Jalen Sims, I've said it all season long, Coach. He just gives you some positive minutes, and now he's giving you some scoring as well as the effort that he gives you on the floor. Yeah, you know, obviously he's a freshman. He still makes some mistakes, but he, he gives it his all. You know, his mistakes aren't lack of effort. Um, his mistakes are just being able to comprehend exactly everything that's going on in the court at all times, you know, and it takes some time to, to, to learn that kind of thing in, in the college game. But, you know, uh, taking the scouting report like Steven Santa Ana going to drive it right. He drove him right a couple times, and Sims knows it. He just, he just didn't adjust to it quick enough. Um, same thing at, at William Mary. He made a couple mistakes early in, in the first half. Um, but, you know, he just keeps on playing. Uh, he does think his next shot's going in, and I think his next shot's going in. But I also like the way he gave, he got two offensive rebounds in one possession for us and got us three shots, and we scored, and that was in the midst of our comeback to get back in the game. Yeah, it seems like he's always active around the basket doing some good things as Jalen Sims for UNCW. We'll take a break doing some good things here this year. His only year with the Seahawks, it's Sean O'Connell, the graduate transfer. We'll have his profile coming up next. Papa John's, when it comes to better ingredients, better pizza, we deliver. And now we're delivering extra value, too. When the Seahawks win, you win. Get 50% off your online order the day after a Seahawks men's or women's victory with code Seahawks. At Papa John's, when it comes to better ingredients, better pizza, we deliver. And now we're delivering extra value, too. When the Seahawks win, you win. Get 50% off your online order the day after a Seahawks men's or women's victory with code Seahawks. Okay, people, it's Ford Truck Month. And you know what that means. The best deals on America's best-selling trucks for 42 years straight. And with over 28 million sold, isn't it time you join the stampede? Now get 0 for 72 on F-150 or 11395 in total savings plus 1000 cash back only at your Carolina Ford dealer. Hey, Seahawk fans, fill your basket before every game with everything you need from Harris Teeter. Delicious subs and wraps, fresh hot store-made pizza, crowd-pleasing party platters, or ready-to-serve wing trays, just to name a few. Firing up the grill? Harris Teeter Reserve Angus Beef will be the superstar of your game day meal. We guarantee it. Stop in your Harris Teeter for great savings on game day foods or download the HT app to order ahead. Harris Teeter, where Seahawk fans shop for groceries. Along the coast of North Carolina lies one of the best universities in the Southeast, the University of North Carolina, Wilmington. UNC Wilmington, giving flight to imagination. Well, when you go get a graduate transfer, sometimes you just don't know what you're going to get. You only have a guy for a year, Coach. But uh, I think Sean O'Connell has been a perfect fit here this season for UNCW. He knows he's not the star of this team, but he goes in there, whatever you ask him to do. And, and I, again, like Jalen Sims, I like his effort in the game, and he's always around the rim making something happen for you. Yeah, Sean's done a great job, and obviously we would like to have played him more this year, but for you know some injuries, some foul trouble, he hasn't been able to get on the court as much as we have wanted to use him. And uh, you know, obviously when he stays out of foul trouble and he is healthy, he does great things for us. Uh, he, he, he plays exactly what his role is, um, and he's comfortable with that, and he just wants to help the team and, and have fun and, and play one year of basketball. And it hasn't worked out exactly how he wanted to, 
but uh, we, we've loved having him for sure. And how hard is it from his standpoint? Again, you only have that one year to kind of come in, get with your team and, and really be part of a team and make a difference. It's got to be difficult for a graduate transfer. I would think so. I mean, you, you have to try and feel totally comfortable, you know, in the first couple months, you know, and, and try and understand exactly what we're trying to do and what, what our system is and what we want them to do on offense and defense and those kind of things. And so that's difficult to understand. Um, now, obviously, they're graduate students, so they've been in college for a few years, so they are a little more mature and they've seen a lot of basketball and they've seen a lot of systems and styles. Um, but he, he's been he's been absolutely terrific for us. We, we've loved having him on the team. He's been a great teammate and really fun to coach. Uh, again, the graduate transfer from Georgia Southern. Tanner Barth has more now on Sean O'Connell. Life has changed a lot for UNCW grad transfer Sean O'Connell over the past year. He finished up school at Georgia Southern and signed to UNCW to play his final year of college basketball as a Seahawk. And for the first time, he stepped foot on campus and met the coaching staff. He knew this was an opportunity that he couldn't pass up. I just think everything about the program was something I couldn't turn down. Um, you know, the tradition here, the winning tradition, the coaching staff, the city itself, everything is just, it was a perfect fit for my last season. To say O'Connell comes from a basketball family might be an understatement. His dad played for the Duke Blue Devils from 1973 to 1976, and now his younger brother Alex also plays for the Blue Devils. Sean, though, didn't take the same path, but for the family, it's all for the love of the game. All of us are different players, all of us had a different uh, career, but I think it's just the love of the game for all of us. You know, we love to play the sport. Um, you know, we all feed off each other doing well. So I think it's just, you know, being a close-knit bunch and just enjoying the game that we love to play. With Sean having so many connections to North Carolina and having his brother just over two hours away in Durham, Wilmington seemed like the perfect fit, and the state is even starting to feel a little like home. With my brother in Durham, you know, it's a short drive away, and then also, my younger brother is actually going to high school in Raleigh now, so he's close too. So the family's kind of relocating to North Carolina. So it's it's definitely a good thing to have everyone close by. Sean is one of the older players on this year's UNCW team that features five underclassmen. And his play on the court, well, it's been consistent, averaging nearly four points and four rebounds a game. But it's his leadership he values the most. And for me, it's just trying to, you know, bring some uh, leadership and bring some experience to the team, you know, having played for four years at another school. I think that's the reason why Coach CB brought me in was to, you know, bring some veteran leadership to the team. So I'm just trying to, you know, mentor some of the young guys and just bring what I can to the table and practice every day. Sean and his brothers played three sports during their time at Milton High School in Georgia. And even though at times they may have liked one sport better than the other, basketball always felt like their calling. We all used to play baseball and football as well. So we used to be the, you know, try sports, but I think in the end, we all realized that basketball was the calling, so we ended up sticking with that, and I think it's been pretty good for all of us. So. Here's a little gift from Molly Me. Wow! Honey! Look at all this free time Molly Mae gave us. We could do anything with this time. Everyone deserves some free time. Call Molly Mae today for your gift of time. 392-3234. At Papa John's, when it comes to better ingredients, better pizza, we deliver. And now we're delivering extra value, too. When the Seahawks win, you win. Get 50% off your online order the day after a Seahawks men's or women's victory with code Seahawks. At Papa John's, when it comes to better ingredients, better pizza, we deliver. And now we're delivering extra value, too. When the Seahawks win, you win. Get 50% off your online order the day after a Seahawks men's or women's victory with code Seahawks. Okay, people, it's Ford Truck Month. And you know what that means. The best deals on America's best-selling trucks for 42 years straight. And with over 28 million sold, isn't it time you join the Stampede? Now get 0 for 72 on F-150 or 11395 in total savings plus 1000 cash back only at your Carolina Ford dealer. Along the coast of North Carolina lies one of the best universities in the Southeast, the University of North Carolina, Wilmington.
UNC Wilmington, giving flight to imagination. Time now for this week's play of the week. We go back to the game with Elon and the guy we just looked at, Sean O'Connell. Always around the rim, and it pays off here. Let's take a look. Be early on, especially from those perimeter shots. Pick it up, gets in the inbounds of Silla, got it right back, and then leaves it downstairs, left side for O'Connell for the dunk. He's I've never got four, 23-14. Kind O'Connell lives around the rim. You get it to him, he knows what to do. He finishes here off the feed from Ty Gadsden. A nice job, our play of the week. That leads into our Molly Mae Glass Cleaner of the Week this week. And once again, it is Devontae Kaycock, the senior. Look at his numbers, 13 and a half rebounds, two on the offensive end, 11 and a half on the defensive end, 21 double-doubles on the season for now. Continues to lead the country in that key statistic. So a great job there this week for Devontae Kaycock. Once again, the Glass Cleaner of the Week. We flip over and take a look at the Carolina Ford Dealers Player of the Week, and it is at Ty Gaston, 14 and a half points, got 33%, 31% from three, and 77% from the free throw line. And a good week for him, again, averaging 14 and a half points here this week was Ty Gaston, the Carolina Ford Dealers Player of the Week. We'll take our final break. When we get back, we'll take a look at the standings and look ahead for UNCW, the final week of the regular season in the CAA. That's next. Hey Seahawk fans, fill your basket before every game with everything you need from Harris Teeter. Delicious subs and wraps, fresh hot store-made pizza, crowd-pleasing party platters, or ready-to-serve wing trays, just to name a few. Firing up the grill? Harris Teeter Reserve Angus Beef will be the superstar of your game day meal. We guarantee it. Stop in your Harris Teeter for great savings on game day foods, or download the HT app to order ahead. Harris Teeter, where Seahawk fans shop for groceries. gift from Molly Mae. Wow! Honey, look at all this free time Molly Mae gave us. We could do anything with this time. Everyone deserves some free time. Call Molly Mae today for your gift of time. 392-3234. At Papa John's, when it comes to better ingredients, better pizza, we deliver. And now we're delivering extra value, too. When the Seahawks win, you win. Get 50% off your online order the day after a Seahawks men's or women's victory with code Seahawks. At Papa John's, when it comes to better ingredients, better pizza, we deliver. And now we're delivering extra value, too. When the Seahawks win, you win. Get 50% off your online order the day after a Seahawks men's or women's victory with code Seahawks. Along the coast of North Carolina lies one of the best universities in the Southeast, the University of North Carolina. UNC Wilmington, giving flight to imagination. Heading into the last week of the regular season, here are your conference standings right now as Hofstra slipping a little bit at the top. Only a game up on Northeastern as you look as the Seahawks are trying to get some momentum heading into Charleston here. We'll see what happens this week, but certainly uh, still interesting with uh, most teams still having two games to play. The Seahawks, though, only one game. As we take a look at this week's schedule delivered by Papa John's, the Seahawks will go to their uh, travel partner, Charleston, on Saturday. That'll be a 4 o'clock tip. 345 airtime for us. Coach, it's been a long time, December 29th, since you played Charleston the first time, and now you play the final game of this regular season. Yeah, obviously it's a long time ago. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll refresh our memories. we got all week. Uh, we don't have a Thursday game, and so we'll make sure that our guys understand exactly what they're going to do. Um, you know, they, they're not playing as well as they probably wanted to. We're not playing nearly as well as we wanted to. You know, that's the way the season goes. You know, we're in a position that nobody wants to be in, um, you know, but that's where our play has gotten us, and so we didn't feed off of our win against Hofstra at home this past weekend and somehow some way we got to figure out uh, we need to play a lot better at Charleston to gain a little bit of momentum going into the CA tournament next week. All right coach best of luck we'll have those highlights next week. For CB McGrath and our entire crew I'm Mike Carroll. thanks for joining us we'll see you next week the final episode of the season of the CB McGrath show. Have a great day everybody. CB McGrath show is brought to you by your Carolina Ford dealers Papa John's, Molly Maid and Harris Teeter.